Hello everybody and welcome back to Ultima Sims Guides. My name is Taylor, for those of you who have never been here before, and in today's video we're not even talking about The Sims. That's a first. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me questions about this new game that is supposed to be coming out next year called People of the Newberry? Newberry? I don't even know. And my thoughts on it, I've had a lot of comments about it in the last couple days, so I just wanted to kind of address some of the things that have been going around about this game and whether or not I think that it's kind of sketchy. And the answer is yes. Um, I'm just gonna get that right off the bat. I'm not trying to bash this game and its creators, I just think that based on everything that we know so far that it doesn't seem to be very legitimate. I don't want to say that it's not going to be a thing because if it is, you know, if it, if it does come out next year, I will eat my words. And if it is what they're showing, then... You know, but I, I'm just really worried about it. So that's what we're going to be talking about today is the people of the Newberry. So if that is something you're interested in, you should definitely stick around. Let me know what you think in the comments about this game. Um, yeah, <laughs> so let's just jump in. We're going to go over a couple of the videos that they posted on their YouTube channel so you guys can kind of get a gist for what has been published by them. And then we'll just like jump in because <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts. So the first video we see that they have posted was premiered on June 22nd, 2020, which wasn't that long ago, and is the People of the Newberry official teaser. And you can see that it looks very hyper-realistic. It looks honestly like it's a beautiful looking game. And I do really like the way that it looks. Um, you know, dirty car, maybe you should wash that. But there's a lot of things that are really beautiful. This is a great looking house. There's a lot of shadows. Like it looks gorgeous. I'm not going to knock them on that. My only issue is that I don't know if it's real. <laughs> um, so all of the tree shadows are beautiful. I like the house is cute. The mailbox is cute. I don't really like that it says US mail because that would like take me out of a life sim if it was like I like how in the sims you know everybody speaks simlish. Nothing is in real words so it's kind of different. But you know it says people of Newberry 2021. So that is the first video. The next thing that they posted was on July 2nd, and this is the character creation for a male character in People of the Newberry. Now, I don't like the way that these characters look at all. I think that they are too realistic. I don't really like hyper-realistic simulation games. I don't want them to look like real people. I want them to be more cartoony so that it takes me out of real life a little bit. So this is not something that I'm interested in. They have a ton of presets, which I'm not entirely sure about. They also look like they're going to have a skin tone issue based on what you can see there on the screen. There are not enough darker skin tone swatches at all but you are able to kind of adjust the proportions with sliders, which is kind of cool. But once again, I still don't know if this is real. <laughs> so I'm taking everything with a grain of salt on this one. You're also able to change the inner and outer color of the eyes and, and the size of your pupil and all of that. So that's kind of cool. But once again, I don't like how real they look. Um, I don't like how real the tattoos look. Everything for me, the why I love The Sims is because of how cartoony it is. I know that some people don't agree, but that's just how I see it. And then we go into the character creation female. Honestly, I just feel like these characters look like something from like Grand Theft Auto or one of those kinds of games. I think that they look way too real. Their hair reminds me of The Sims 3, which I hated. Um, but all of the preset faces are just, I don't know, I, there's just something about it that I just dislike with The Sims. With The Sims, oh my goodness. In any of these videos or a video if I ever make one on Paralives, I'm gonna call them Sims just out of habit. But I definitely think that this is, it's a weird one. It's a weird situation. <laughs> we have character creation. We have, they also have a video where they show off a ton of different animals that they're going to have. They also have a video where they show off like the Northern Lights and there's a horse in the video. But to me, they just, it doesn't feel like a life simulation game teaser. They feel more just like, oh, look at this pretty thing we made. Now give us money. Like, I don't want to say that, but it's how I feel feel? I don't know. It's so hard to like not come off as a jerk, but okay. So let's go into some of the reasons why I think that this is sketchy. So what the community around this game and probably all Sims fans have discovered is that a lot of the assets in this game were purchased from somewhere called the Unity Assets Store. Now this is an online store where indie game developers can buy assets they can put into their games to save them some time and save them development money. So I understand the use of this, so the farmhouse that we see in this video is actually from the Unity Asset Store. You can see there's a screenshot that was of the living room. It is actually from this video here that's called HQ Retro Farmhouse from the Unity Asset Store. It's also on YouTube if you want to look it up. So you can buy the assets to build this house in your game and not actually develop it yourself. So I understand the use of assets so that they could save money. 
However, there was no like upfront talking about how they bought stuff from the Unity Asset Store. So when people discovered this, a lot of people immediately were like, this seems like a scam, this seems really sketchy. So I'm just throwing that up there that they did buy a lot of their assets and they didn't actually create some things. So this is apparently a one-man team is what I've heard. But then I'm also seeing some Twitter accounts pop up saying that they're like the lead designer or the lead artist or something. But this Twitter account has two tweets, so I find that kind of sketchy, but now they're acting like it's not just one guy making it. What I've kind of gathered, I watched a video by Simmer Erin here on YouTube. She does a lot of like news and speculation videos and she asked the developer a couple questions, I believe on Discord or on Twitter or something, I don't know. And they said that they had bought a bunch of stuff from Unity Assets and then they also had someone help them develop the actual creators, creators, the actual people in the game. Um, I don't know what they're called, so I'm gonna not call them Sims, we're trying. Now I find that, sketchy <laughs> because this person who's creating this game hasn't created any of the things that we're seeing so there's a video with a bunch of animals that were probably all purchased from the asset store they're saying that somebody else helped them make the actual characters and that all of like, the furniture and stuff that we saw was bought off of a store so like what have they done other than make these like pretty videos i'm just worried that this game's going to be extremely laggy if it ever does come out that it's not really going to be well made that it's going to be extremely unorganized because this person doesn't seem to actually know what they're doing i don't know is it does that make me sound like a jerk i feel like i sound like a jerk for like talking about this and saying that i don't believe anything that this person is saying but i don't know i honestly just don't understand what's going on it just seems like it came out of nowhere it shouldn't there's no way that a game that this is all we've seen. We've seen some characters, we've seen some animals, and we saw a house, and we saw the Northern Lights. It doesn't make sense to me that that game's going to come out this time next year. It doesn't seem like it's further, like, far enough along. So I want to go over some of my favorite tweets that I've read on Twitter about this and some people who are also a little bit skeptical. So the first one is by another Plumbob. This people of the Newberry game sound sketchy. I hope I'm wrong, but it seems iffy that it has come out of nowhere almost overnight and with a game that looks so finished already. It seems too polished to be an indie game and the cast looks like an MMORPG too. I don't even know what that means. MMORPG? <laughs> what does that mean? A massively multiplayer online game? I've never heard of that. I'm not really like a gamer gamer, I play The Sims, so that's fine. <laughs> and then they also added, of course I'm not an expert on this, but my intuition tells me to beware and not get my hopes up for this one just yet. Everyone has seen Paralives getting attention and money on Patreon, so they could be trying to take advantage of that, which is something that I really agree with. And actually about a month ago, I told my boyfriend all about Paralives and how they're developing it and how they're using Patreon to get money for it each month. And I really like that model so that they can kind of have it like a Kickstarter, but for a video game, so they can kind of, you know, get the ball rolling and make it happen. And what he responded with was, wow, it'd probably be really easy to convince someone that you're making a game, get a bunch of money, and then never release it. And I was like, oh, that could definitely happen. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if someone did. And for some reason, this feels like that to me. And I just, I feel guilty for saying that because if it's real, I just, I don't know anymore. <laughs> so let's go on to another tweet. So this is actually a tweet from the people of the Newberry. Um, this is at Newberry Game. It says, welcome to Newberry. Do you like managing digital people? Do you love making your own citizens cook, clean, play sports, pay bills, and start a family incredibly exciting? Well, congratulations, we have this and more. You can play with friends in online mode for six people. See, this is another thing that I find sketchy because like, it's an indie game. You, you aren't making any of your own assets on your own. Like there's a lot of small details that you're just paying for instead of creating, which I understand to save money. I get that. But then you're also making it an online game, which seems like it would be very complicated. And I just, I don't know. I feel like if you're going to release something like this, you would release the game and then maybe later on make it an online game or make a different iteration that's an online game so you can learn everything. You know? Anyway, I find the online mode to just be kind of unbelievable because it just seems really, really intense. Um, I don't know. They're also saying that there won't be any cheats because the game supports online mode. They're saying there won't be any mods because they honestly legally probably can't use mods because they're buying other people's assets off Unity. So if someone turned that into something else using mods or custom content, then that would be an issue. So there won't be any mods or CC. And they're also saying, <laughs> that they're going to be releasing it on the PS5 and the Xbox something, the new one. <laughs> Can you tell I don't play console games? 
This tweet here by Zerbu on Twitter, I love that name, says, After learning more about people of the Newbury, I find it mighty suspicious that the unknown developer of an unknown game with a small following suddenly has license to develop for next-gen consoles. It seems fishy to me. I'm not saying the game is completely fake. Maybe the developer just assumes they'll be able to get a license and don't need a disclaimer, or maybe I'm wrong and they actually do have one. Although, if it's the former, I question their understanding of game development, which I definitely, definitely agree with. It's also a lot more expensive and difficult to develop a game for a console, so the fact that they're just gonna jump in with Mac, PC, and both consoles is just... It just seems fishy to me. The exact way that they ended their first tweet, it just seems fishy to me. And something else that's been happening is that People of the Newberry on Twitter is blocking anybody, pretty much anybody, who says that their game might be a scam. And it just, um, so this tweet here says, I was blocked by the people of the Newberry Twitter account, and you can already tell that if he didn't have anything to hide and was honest with everyone, he wouldn't block people out of the blue. And I feel like they might be getting a lot of tweets about how the game might be a scam, but like, um, and then this is where I found an account that said that they were the lead artist. So we have the artist of Newberry, they have 14 followers, and they responded to that tweet. So if you scroll back on their Twitter account, the very first tweet is them responding or like retweeting a video that Pixelade made about the simulation game where they just said thank you for the support at Pixelade means so much. And then they also have a retweet that says I'm not convinced the game is a hoax yet because the developer said that he bought those assets. So those are the only two tweets on an account that seemingly was created yesterday. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, are they adding a lead artist Twitter account with like a weird like image on their Twitter account just to make it seem as if this is like a full team and it's a little bit less sketchy. I don't know. I honestly don't know. And I'm just, I'm a little bit sketched out by it, to be honest with you. And this tweet here by Emily says, please be very careful about financially supporting this supposed new indie life sim. In their video of their character creator, there's a painting and furniture taken directly from House Flipper. I also have reservations about an unknown indie developer having access to next-gen consoles for development. That's not something you're going to get from Sony and Microsoft just because you asked nicely. I will add that someone mentioned that it is possible that the House Flipper assets could be generic assets available to everyone, but there is still plenty of plenty about this game that seems off. So a lot of the graphics do look a lot like the game House Flipper, and I understand that they might have bought the same assets that House Flipper bought. I don't know. It's really, it's just, it's just sketching me out. So another thing I wanted to do was go on to their Patreon. Now they have a 29 patrons right now that are giving them $92 a month. And if you go on to the Paralives Patreon, you can see that they have almost 9,000 patrons and they're getting $40,000 a month. The reason why I think that this is an important comparison is because I think that people are seeing the success of Paralives and how much money they're getting. They might be just thinking like, okay, we can either fake that we're making a game and get money from people, or we can actually make a game and just have it be kind of crap, but up until we actually release it, get money from people, if that makes sense. So I don't know. Their Twitter just has their official teaser trailer and then pretty much the same explanation that we see everywhere. They post the same thing on Twitter, on their YouTube, just everywhere they post the exact same thing. I feel like on a Patreon that you're asking people for money, you should definitely have more. Because if you go on, once again, I understand that Paralives is a little bit more further along, I get that, but their Patreon is a lot more intense. They have information about all of the features that are gonna come to the game, as well as an entire, like pictures of every person who is a member of their team, which I really like, their goals, why they use Patreon, and just a thank you. And they just seem to be a little bit more legitimate in my opinion. <laughs> so I don't really know if this video made any sense, but I'm just extremely, extremely skeptical about this People of the Newberry game. I don't want anybody to just throw their money at a Patreon because they see something that might be better than The Sims in some way. I don't want you to just give your money away because somebody says they're making a game without actually proving it. I do feel like Paralives has proved time and time again that they are working on a game. I don't know if it's going to be a good game. I don't know if it's going to be better than The Sims. I don't know if it's going to be the same as it. Like, who knows? Who? Who knows? But I do believe that the Paralives team and Alex, who is the head of the Paralives team, are definitely showing you instead of just showing you very small things and then asking for money. And it doesn't seem, it just doesn't seem legitimate to me. I think that the graphics look too good for an indie game, which is why I believe that they just bought most of the things instead of actually creating them themselves. It makes me really worrisome for the actual gameplay 
And there's also an issue where I think that they've said now that they're going to include LGBT, but the creator is Russian. And in Russia, it's actually illegal for them to promote any LGBT anything to minors. And this would be a game that's probably played by a lot of minors. So that could be an issue. So we don't actually know. <laughs> they're also now saying that they're going to add Supernaturals because a bunch of people in the last few days have asked them about it. And I'm like, okay, so you're going to add just a bunch of different types of Supernaturals in the next year to a game that like the graphics already look done. I just, I just have a lot of questions and I'm not saying flat out that this is fake. I'm not going to say that. We are not. Allegedly, this might not be legitimate, but I'm not going to say that it is. <laughs> I'm very worried right now. I'm freaking out, but I just, I don't know. There's just something about it that I don't like. And I really, really, really hope that it's real. I honestly, I honestly do. I honestly hope that it's real just so that anybody who is excited about this or anybody who wants to play this game or anybody who does decide to support them financially, they don't get screwed over, to be honest with you. But anyway, guys, I don't know if this video made any sense. I'm just kind of ranting because I've seen a lot on Twitter and on YouTube about this life sim. I'm going to leave some videos about it down in the description so you guys can get more information. I really hope you're having an awesome day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.